All right, guys, how you doing? It's Rabia. I hope you're all good. So, High Gain Harmony, episode four. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. Uh, I feel like it's going well. I'm really enjoying myself shooting these, so hopefully you guys are as well. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and if you've got any more suggestions for amplifiers that we can blend together, then please do put those suggestions in the comment section. I will do my best to make sure we get round to them. So, High Gain Harmony, episode four. What are we doing in this one? Well, we've done the JVM 5150 combination, which I really enjoyed. We've done the 5150 Soldano sort of father and son kind of uh, episode, which I really enjoyed. We've done the SLO and the Mezzo Barber. And for this one, I figured we'd do uh, father and grandson, so to speak. So we're going to take the SLO 100 and we're going to blend that with the VX100 from Victor Amplifiers, the Super Kraken. The reason I say grandfather and grandson, so to speak, is because the uh, VX100 was heavily inspired by the 5150, which in turn was heavily inspired pretty much circuit for circuit um, by the SLO. So we're kind of going through the evolution of high gain amplifiers at this point because the 5150 came out as a result of the Soldano and then the Super Kraken, well, the Kraken amplifiers came out as a result of the 5150 because I was a massive fan of the 5150. Therefore, we're going to take the VX100 and we're going to blend it with the SLO100 and see what kind of epic tones we can get. So obviously this series is called High Gain Harmony, but I do like to get some lower gain tones as well. So we're going to try the crunch channels as well with some ambience because it'd be rude not to. So on the ground, I've got my UAFX pedals. I've got the Starlight Echo Station and the Golden Reverberator in the loop. I've got the Microcosm from Hologram Electronics. I've got the Origin FX Revival Drive Compact and I've got the Maxon OD808 and the UAFX Astra all in front of these amplifiers. And we're actually running out into an ABY and uh, the Layla P split because I've actually run into a lot of problems trying to get rid of, I guess, uh, ground hum and like feedback and it's actually really hard to get rid of it. Um, but I'm trying my best, so hopefully we'll, we'll get somewhere in this one. So the last thing I need to let you guys know in terms of signal chain is that both amplifiers run into their own respective Sur Reactive Load IR. I got a second one so that I could run these uh, experiments more accurately. So they're exactly the same load box. Both amplifiers run into one each. They go into the computer and I'm running an instance of Archetype Nolly for the cab section. Uh, Cause I'm really loving the way that works. It means that I can tweak the cabs after the fact and get exactly the kind of miking that I want. So that is the signal chain. Okay, so I've got my guitar. First guitar we're gonna run into this is the PRS Pauls guitar. So what I wanna do is show you what each amp sounds like. So I'm gonna play a bit, just a couple of chords and you can hear each one independently. So we'll start with the SLO 100. And now here is the VX100. So you've heard them both independently. Right, let's go straight in, bridge pickup, crunch tone, both amps together. Okay, so it, it's a great sounding crunch straight away. They sound very comfortable together. Sounds like one sound to me. Time to throw on some effects. I've got the Golden Reverberator and the Starlight Echo Station. So let's have a little goosey gander.
That's the sound. For throwing a little bit of phase. know what that is put it in the comment section but i wouldn't be surprised if you all knew what that was okay i'm aware that we've spent a considerable portion of time just on this low gain ambient crunch sound between the super kraken and the soldano slo kind of was meant to get into the high gain stuff earlier than this but it's so good um what i wanted to do next actually was um push these channels so use the revival drive keep the gain set normal so you don't really hear any difference but what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost the output of that pedal so it hits the front end of both crunch channels really hard and it's going to give us like a, a pushed crunch like a powerful crunch so let's just try it without anything on have a little and now if I turn on the revival you should just push the front If that's not tight enough, you can throw the max on on, which I've just done, and it should tighten everything right up. This is without it. Okay, so I've swapped out to my Chapman Signature Baritone. This has got the silo in the in the bridge and the little 59 in the neck with the five way. So I was gonna go straight into the heavy, but please forgive me. I just wanna hear how it sounds. Position two, pushed clean with some reverb and delay. Getting vibey. <laughs> I definitely got carried away once again, but I'm glad I did because it sounded epic. But let's move on to the high gain channels. So I'm going to swap over now. Let's have a gander. It's a lot of noise. So this is the Soldano SLO 100. And this is the VX100. This is both together.
That's awesome. I think it's because you get that sizzle from the SLO, which you don't get with the VX100. Because we, we tuned the VX100 so that you didn't necessarily need like a presence knob. Some people prefer having that presence and that, that, that stuff right at the top that you normally EQ out. But when you put them two together, it sounds so girthy. So for me, the combination is great. As soon as I put the tube screamer on, it's gonna sound much tighter and more articulate for the chugs. Like these, for, to me, sound really nice and fat. But I know some of you guys might be like, it's missing the attack. For me, I prefer that because it means when I do my hammer on stuff, like uh like, as a really rudimentary example, you can hear more of the articulation, the percussiveness. When I put the tube screamer on, it just, everything becomes too gainy and too flat. Now if I put it on. Like it's, it's good, but you can't do the same thing. That was just a small minor point. Anyway, let's get back to the chugs. So this is without a tube screamer. And here comes with the tube screamer. It's better for that kind of style playing. The only thing I would say is that it's it's just way less dynamic, it's way more noisy, and I prefer more of a dynamic tone. This is something I'm noticing. Whatever I'm trying, uh, what amp combination, when I turn the tube screamer on, it's great, but it's not doesn't work as well for me personally as a player in terms of feel, but it sounds more appropriate, if that makes sense. There's a lot of noise coming right now. So we've heard it with the Tube Screamer on. It's great for that articulate chugging, but I actually really like the depth you get without it. Throw on the reverberator and the starlight. So I worked up a sweat there because it was really heavy. It sounded great. We're all good. We're still recording. Everything's all right. It sounded really good. Really fat and heavy for the baritone. It's just great. So I figured we'd do some lead with this old chappy chap. It's not a Chapman. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
So I was just messing around. Hopefully John's edited a bit of that together just to show you what the general lead sound is. I've turned the tube screamer on and I've added the delay. Right, that is the end of this episode because it's gone on for quite a while. One of my cameras died because I was going on for so long. I'm really happy. That, that was a really good sound. I would say that that is up there with the 5150 Soldano combination, but I actually prefer this one for the push clean stuff and for the lead, actually. Um, I apologize for the shaky playing. I just, this is more about blending the tones and stuff, so we'll see how this video turns out. But um, yeah. Thumbs up for that combination. I What I really liked about it was that you were getting all the sizzle from the Soldano, but it's really girthy. But then the Victory is also girthy, but doesn't have the sizzle, but it's got like more of a thick mid-range presence to it, like a high mid thing. So when you put the two together, it's almost like the Soldano does this, and then the Victory does this, and they kind of just meld together. And I really like that. I thought that sounded great. The push clean stuff, hands down, one of the nicest tones that I've had um, through two amp combinations in the studio. Again, I know I'm gonna say this like every time now, but that one in particular, because usually what happens is I have to adjust it when I get the baritone out. Uh, I don't know why, maybe it's just because it's different frequencies, because it's lower or anything like that, but I find that I have to you know, boost it a bit to pull things out of the baritone, whereas I didn't do anything with this. Sounded fantastic with the PRS. When I got the baritone on, that was like, yeah, this could be a recording album quality recording rig, uh, the way it sounded. So. Um, the effects sounding really, really good, of course. Um, and I really liked the tone when I boosted the crunch channels using the Revival. Um, basically, it all sounded great. This isn't a surprise because I, knew, I know that I like stereo rigs. And obviously these are amps through my studios because I like these amps. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this series so far and I really hope you guys are. So please let me know what you think. Please let me know in the comments section. And please, if you feel like it, suggest other amp combinations. Not just the ones you see in this room, but any amp that you think would be great to try in this kind of setting, please let me know and I'll see if I can get hold of one. But anyway, that was High Gain Harmony episode four. Thank you all for watching these episodes. Like, subscribe and share. I've been Rabia and I will see you all very soon. <laughs>